Hello students, myself Sumagla Biradar. In previous videos, we already discussed about some of the constructs of the conceptual data modeling, that is relationship types, entity types, different types of the attributes and structural constraints. Let's see about ER diagrams. ER means entity relationship diagrams here. So first, we will learn about what actually ER diagram means and what are the naming conventions you are used for drawing the ER, or designing the ER diagrams and issues comes under in this. So notations for ER diagrams. So these are the some of the notations you are used okay, to draw the ER diagrams. ER means what? Entity relationship diagrams here. So if you want to specify any entity for specifying the entity in ER diagram, this is the rectangle you are use here. You already know that what actually entity type means. So those entity type name you have to specify using what rectangle box. Next is relationship. So if you want to relate any entity types for relating that we require relationship and this relationship you are representing using this diagram here. Okay. So this is diamond shape. Next is attributes. Attributes which describe the properties of the entities. So now to specify those attributes this oval shape is used. Next is weak entity type. So which entity type don't have key attribute. So such type of the entity types you are using with the double rectangles here. And relationship which relates weak entity type with the another entity types. So that relationship also you are using the double okay, diamonds here. Next is multi-valued attributes. Attributes which hold multi-values. So such type of the attributes we call as multi-valued attributes. And this double oval we are used for multi-valued attributes here. Key attribute, which attribute value it is unique or distinct. So such type of the attributes usually it is represented under oval using the underline here. Okay, this oval is for attributes type. If you are using underline, indicates what that attribute is key attribute. Next is composite attributes. Composite attributes means that mean attribute you can further subdivide as a sub attributes here. That one you can represent using this notation here. Okay. So this is the notation for composite attribute and this is notation for key attribute and this for multi-valued and this for weak entity type and this is for sorry weak entity relationship type and this is for weak entity type attribute relationship and entity type derived attributes. So if you are deriving the any attributes from the stored attributes that attributes you are representing using this notation here. So these are the some of the notations which are used during ER diagrams here. Okay. Next also you are having the different types of the relationship types. Okay. Structural constraints you have to specify here. So in the structural constraints once again you already know that you are having the two types. One is based on the participation. It may be total or it may be partial here. And based on the coordinated ratio it may be 1 is to 1, n is to 1, m is to 1 or n is to 1 here. So how to represent those things. These are the notations actually are used to represent the participation. So E1 is what here? Entity because you are represented using the rectangle here. And this is the entity 2 here. And these two entities you are related using the relationship R here. And this side you are used single line. Single line indicates partial participation. And double line indicates total participation here. Okay. Is it clear? So next is coordinate ratio. So this one indicates what it is? One side. Okay. Entity 1 it is involved while relating or participated with the entity 2 here. So here this is the list. If you want to specify coordinate ratio 1 is to n then this side you have to take 1 and this side you have to take n here. And usually one good habit of reading the naming conventions. Okay. So now usually if you take the any ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, usually you will read or start from the left to right and top to bottom here. So from left to right you have to specify here 1 is to n here. If it is ratio of m is to n then it is m and this one must be n here. So same thing you can also specify with the help of the as you know that structural constraints are what it is combination of total participation and also coordinate ratio. So if you want to specify using the structural constraint both you can specify 
separately or you can take as a structural constraint. Then you have to use the concept like this min and max here. So, min and max indicates the participations and also the coordinate ratio. 1 is to n if you want to specify here, then mean value is 1 and max value is the n here. So, this mean value if it is 0, then it is meaning of that one is the partial participation, may be involved or may not, okay. 0 means that entity may be involved or may not here. So, if it is mean value is 1, then it indicates total participation here. So, these are the sum of the notations which are used while drawing the ear diagrams or while designing the ear diagrams. Is it clear? Okay. Along with this, you are also using some of the naming convention. If you want to give the name for entity type, that must be known and singular and it must be, you have to specify using the upper case here. If attributes name, if you want to specify attribute names, that must be known and it must be capitalized. Starting letter must be capital here. Next, relationship types. If you want to specify the name of the relationship types, it must be verbs and in uppercase you have to specify. Role names, role, lower case here. So, these are the sum of the naming conventions here. Next, this is the preliminary design of entity types for the company database here, okay. So, now department, department is what here, entity type. So, that one you have to represent using which notation, that is the rectangle and name of this one must be in the uppercase. So, that is why it is T-E-P-A-R-T-M-T -E is what it is, it is in the uppercase. So, it indicates what, this is the entity type name here. And next you are using the ovals. Ovals indicates what? Ovals are for what? The oval notation you are used for which purpose? Attributes here. So now all these are the attributes and attribute name must be capitalized here. Okay. So capitalized means what? Starting letter must be capital here. See M is capital and here also M is capital, N is capital, N is capital and L is capital. So now and you are using the underlined. Underlined indicates what here? Key attribute, name and number, your underline means what? These two attributes are key attributes here. Next is the double oval. Double oval indicates what it is. This attribute holds multiple values here. It is multi-valued attribute. Location is multi-valued attribute. In the same way, project, this is also one of the entity type name. And name and number are the key attributes and location and controlling department are the attribute names here. So, in the same way, employee is the, what here? Employee is the entity type here. And this is one of the example for the composite attribute. Name is the attribute. That name attribute, once again, you are further divided as what now here? F name, middle initial and L name here. Okay. So, now this is the example for the composite attributes. These are the preliminary design of the entity types. So, if I go for the company database, these are the just you are, okay, representing the what? Just the designing of the entity types and what are the attributes comes under in this entity type. Next, we will see all ER diagram for company database here. This is the ER diagram for the company schema here along with the structural constraints you are specified and for specifying the structural constraint you are here we used min and max here. Yes, employee is what here? Employee is the entity type and department is entity type, project is entity type, dependent is entity type and here you are used the double rectangle. So, what it indicates? Dependent is weak entity type. So, for this one, you do not have the, okay, key here. See here, you are not having the, any attributes with the underline. This one is the dash underline. Dash underline indicates what? It is the partial key here, but it is not a key attribute here. So, if I go to the employee, here one attribute is underlined. Indicates what? This is the key attribute. If any entity type having the key attribute, so then you call such type of the attributes, uh, sorry, entity types as what now? Strong entity type. In department, name is the key attribute. And in project, name and number is the key attribute. So now all these entity types is, types are having, okay, key attributes. But for this dependent, there is no key attribute here. So this Okay, dashed underlined indicates partial key and this one is the weak entity type. 
that one you have to represent using the double rectangle. If you want to relate this weak entity type with the strong entity type, then you have to use the double diamonds. Okay. So now these are the entity types and attributes of the entity types. Now you have to relate employee and department. So, for relating the employee and department, you are relating with the two relationship types here. One is works for, works for is the verb and this is the name of the relationship type here. So, now employee works for the department here and also employee manages the department here. So, here all the employees all work for the okay, department. Among the all employees, one employee will manage the department as a manager here. So, this is the relationship between the department and the employee. You are relating with the help of the works for and the managers here. In the same way, department and project, you are related with the help of the which relationship type it is? Relationship type is controls. Okay, Department controls the project here. As I told so, how to read the, this in this year diagram, you have to read from left to right. That's why employee works for department and top to bottom. That's why department controls project here, okay. In the same way, employee works on project. Even employee works on the sum of the project here. So, project, it is related with the department with the help of the relationship type as a controls and project, it is related with the employee with the help of the works on here, okay. So, now these are the relationships which are used to relate the employee and project and employee and department here. Next is the dependent, employee and dependent, these two are related with the help of what it is dependent table here. So, now these are what here, these are the entity types and relationship types here. Next, we'll go for the S. Next is what? I'll tell the role names here. So, this is the role name, okay. What role this particular employee will pay? That one you have to specify here. Employee role is employee and this department, okay. Role name is department and here employee role is the manager, employee manager, okay. They will play the role of manager while relating with the managers. In the same way, department, this was role of the department is what role it signifies now? It signifies the controlling department and here it signifies the controlled project here, okay. This is the which department controls which project. So, that roles are signified here. Next thing, the role name here, it is what? Employee works for projects here and here employer what now employer will be workers here okay so now here it is role is the employee and here it is role is the dependent so these are the role names okay which signifies what are the roles each entity types place here okay will along with the relationship type is it clear now okay next i'll go for the what structural constraints so, structural constraints here, employee works for the department and here I use the structural constraint as what here, 1 comma 1 here, 1 indicates what it is, first one is minimum value and next is the maximum value here. So, now here one employee can works for only one department here, so that is why it is what it is, 1 Minimum is employee if it is there, employee must work for any one department. So, minimum is 1 here and employee can work for only one department here. Maximum is also 1 here. If I go to the department side, here I taken 4 comma n here. If department is there, so how many employees can work for department? Minimum is 4, maximum is n here. Okay, any number of the employees can work for the same department for one department may contain multiple employees here or multiple employees will work for the department that's why minimum is 4 and maximum is n here so here minimum value 1 indicates what this is also total participation and this is also total participation employee if it does exist all the employee entities must be related with the entities of the department here okay so now this is about the Okay, what structural constants here. So, next I will go to this part here. So, in this part here I use 0, 1 here. 0, 1 means what? Minimum 
okay employees may be manager or may not among the okay set of entities any one employee is the manager here okay so for one department how many managers is required only one manager yes that's why it is the maximum is one and minimum is what that okay employee may be manager or may not here okay so that's why it is the zero here zero indicates what it is partial participation partial participation means what it is so that may be related that entity may be related with the department or may not here okay so next if I go to the department side here minimum is 1 and maximum is also 1 here. So if department is there, so manager is compulsory here. So, so that's why here for the department one manager, one employee must be play as a role of the manager. For one department only one manager here. Okay. So maximum and minimum value for this department is what it is manager. For one department one manager is there and here one indicates what it is it is total participation here this one is partial and this one is total here zero indicates partial and values other than zero indicates total participation okay is it clear next if i go for the employee works on project so if your employee is there employee must works for project here minimum one project employee must work so they may work more than one project here it is not compulsory that or only one employee must work for one per project here that employee can work on more than one project here in the same way here so one project may be contained the any number of the employees here okay so that's why if the worker side also employee can work on more than project same project may contain more than one employee here so minimum project is one and maximum workers for the project is n here so here minimum employee is one and maximum employee can work on the project is n here so worker side one employee as a minimum works for any one project or that employee may work may works on more than one project here so that's why it is what one comma n and one comma n so one indicates what it is it is the total participation next department may controls project or may not here so if they control so then as yes, you can specify the number here so here it is used with zero means what it is may control or may not it is not compulsory here so that's what is zero here n means what same department may controls more than one project here okay so multiple projects this department may controls here yes they can control here so that's what is zero comma n zero indicates what it is partial participation next project so if project is there it must be controlled by any one department here so one project it is controlled by only one department it's not like that same project can be controlled by multiple departments here that's why here minimum is one and maximum is also one here so this is the what structural constants between department and the project here in the same way employee may have the dependence or may not have the dependence here if they have dependence then you will represent that one here that's what is zero means what may or may not it is not compulsory here next is one employee can have multiple dependence here that's what is zero comma one here zero means it is partial participation if dependent is there as yes, dependent must be related with the employee because it is weak entity type and you are identifying this with the identifying relationship here this dependence of is the identifying relationship here okay so now here if employee is there this dependent must be related with the any one employee okay and maximum is also one here okay this dependent must be depend on any particular employee not more than one employee here so this side it is participation is what it is it is total here this side it is partial here so this is about the structural constants so this is about your year diagram is it clear no yes or no okay thank you